here at gorgeous Duke Gardens. I'm with Mike Owens, who's curator of the historic gardens here. And we're gonna talk cherries. It's peak cherry tree time. And oh my gosh, Mike, what a beautiful thing this is. Tell me what we're looking at here. These are Akibono cherries. It's a cultivar of the Yoshino cherry. Sure. And this one is one I picked because I really love the way it glows the way it shines um, uh, in the sunlight. Um, I think it's one of the brightest of the Yoshino types. It's really gorgeous. It's it's not quite white. There's this faint blush pink to it that's mm -hmm. just charming. And isn't it a little earlier than what people think of as Yoshi, true Yoshino? Yeah, this, we have some Yoshinos out here and this one blooms a little bit earlier than those. And has a long season. It, it's about the same as the other Yoshinos, but it's really exciting when it does bloom because it's so early here. Mm -hmm. It blooms with the red buds and people come from all over to see this particular alley, which has been here about 12 years. Okay, so you put this in. I did, yeah. We used to have linden trees here, which had, a lot of them had blown over in the storms. Okay. And so we redid this whole alley and built some rain gardens on the side as well and I put the containers in and the idea here was we have our highest visitation in spring to give visitors a really pretty alley to walk through in the spring and when the petals oh. fall it's like snow falling it's absolutely oh. beautiful. I know in Japan with these they have festivals at petal fall for these trees it's a, considered such mm -hmm. a beautiful sight. Yeah we have a large Asian population mm -hmm. in our area and you will see a lot of them really love to come to the gardens because we have so many cherry trees and it makes them think of home. So let's talk a little bit about growing these. I mean, are they pretty easy to grow, correct? Yeah, as long as you're not in too wet of soil. Okay, most they you, want drainage. Most, most yeah. all your cherries need good drainage. Okay. As long as you can give them sunlight. Now mm -hmm. they are, some of the cherries like these, if they're growing in the shade, mm -hmm. will grow and they will have some blooms. Even in the woods here, we have some that have been there for a really long time and they, they bloom and... They just won't have as many flowers. Right, yeah. Yeah, and especially if, if, unless it's under pines, which are evergreen, right. uh, if it's in the deciduous woods, right. they, they do okay in part shade. I like to give them at least half a day of sun. Yeah, so pretty fast growing? This one is. These have been here 12 years and they were probably half the size okay. as they are now. They're okay. probably about 25, 25 feet, feet tall say. now, and yeah. I got them, they're about 10 to 12 feet. Okay, so that's pretty good growth. Yeah. How about fertilizing them? Do you do anything to them? We have fairly good soil here. We didn't fertilize them okay. at all. No, no real needs to fertilize. Okay, they're not a real hungry trees. plant. Mm -hmm. What about pests? Do you have any issues with like tent caterpillars or any of that sort of stuff? Sometimes cherries can get borers. Yeah. And, and, but out here we have a variety of different trees and shrubs. We don't really have a lot of pests in the gardens. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> but I have seen some of the tent caterpillars yeah. occasionally. And I, they, I often, will, if I can reach them, I'll just put on a glove and just yeah. rake them out. Once yeah. you destroy that, tear up the nest, they kind of don't have that protection from birds. Right. And, and they're, they're easy prey. Yeah. And you don't have to use chemicals that yeah. way. Yeah, better not to do that. Yeah, we try not to spray any chemicals in the gardens unless we have to. Good plan. I approve. <laughs> <laughs> um, t let's talk about maybe a couple other cherries you might recommend in addition to this gorgeous variety. Well, we have a lot of the Prunus subvertella, I guess the Hegan cherries. Mm -hmm, the, um, the autumn blooming varieties yeah, especially. We, yeah. we have some of those out here. And I have a lot of the weeping forms in the terrace garden. Oh, those down are there. lovely. They come in pink, double flowers, and they've been uh, hybridized for years in Asia. And oh. uh, so there are some really good forms out there. And that's that's one of my favorites. They're they're later than these, so mm -hmm. they'll be another two or three weeks later. Oh, that's lovely. Then there are those big pink double flowered kites that right, are the like Qua Quanzan cherry is a light pink, d big giant mm -hmm. double flower. That one does okay here. Um, a lot of the cherries in our heat don't do as well. They might have a 20, 30 year lifespan. Okay. Uh, but these Yoshinos and these Akibonos, they can just keep going. I haven't seen any die or any 
any one of them suffering from heat? Well, the ones in Washington, the famous tidal basin mm -hmm. cherries, aren't they largely this, these Yeroensis, these uh, Yoshino types? Right, and you know, they can get, it gets really hot in DC. It's, yeah. it's in a kind of a depression right, and right on the muddy. coast and, and they can tolerate the heat there yeah. really well. Yeah, so, oh, I, well, this is just spectacular. And I know it's a humongous draw for people to come and see this every year. Right. Here. As soon as the sun comes up, there'll oh. be lots and lots of visitors. Oh, I'm sure there will. Well, I just want to thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and sharing this gorgeous thing you created here. It's just been a lovely visit. Well, you're so welcome. I'm glad you came. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.